This time I'm going to talk about me, the TXT, and how it came to be. In 1999, Tamiya announced that they were coming out with a brand new monster truck, and I was very excited by this, hoping for a high-performance monster truck. You know, there were a lot of people taking the Tamiya Clodbuster, making a four-link suspension for it, you know, making a custom chassis and building a high-performance monster. And instead, what we got was the Juggernaut, which, don't get me wrong, it was an awesome truck, really scale, and uh, just a sweet-looking truck. As a matter of fact, I, I wish I still had one today. But it wasn't the high performance truck I was looking for. So I started to come up with an idea to take that leaf sprung truck and turn it into a four link high performance monster truck. And of course, then they discontinued the Juggernaut shortly after its release. And I said, well, so much for that idea. But then they released the second version of the Juggernaut, the Juggernaut 2. And that was my opportunity to take a new monster truck from Tamiya and make a high performance version. And this is what I came up with. This is my highly modified Tamiya Juggernaut 2. Now, uh, it doesn't look like much because I took it apart and used the axles from some other projects and so on. I kind of wish I kept it all together. So just picture it together as a big monster truck and you'll get the idea. But this is the, what I made up uh, from the Tamiya Juggernaut 2 to make my high performance monster truck. So I made all the four link bars, I made the mounts for the axles, and I designed and made my own chassis. Uh, the chassis I made a little bit thicker because I wanted to have a little bit more depth like a real chassis would, so uh, not like the really thin plate that they were using on like Clodbusters. So that's why it's super thick. You know, it's much heavier, but I wanted to have that look. And it took a long time to machine these plates out on my milling machine. Uh, but when it was done, the truck was looking really good. I had a cantilevered rear shock set up. I was going to do a straight shock front set up. Um, and then I had some Trinity motors in there. And I was going to do a high performance battery and so on. Um, you know, and then when I was just about done with the project, Tamiya caught wind of it through some people that I worked with at the magazine. And uh, they gave me a call. And then next thing you know, we're meeting at the Chicago Hobby Show in the lobby of the hotel. So I met with some of the guys from Tamiya, including Mr. Tamiya himself. And some of the designers, including the guy who designed the Tamiya Bruiser, which is one of my all-time favorites. So it was a really cool experience to sit down with all these people that worked on vehicles and things that I grew up loving. And I went over the project with them. I told them what I did, why I did it, and I just went all over the th you know over everything that I did here, and then answered all their questions. And uh, at the end of that, I took the truck and sent it to Japan so that they can kind of basically put their electronics in, do whatever they got to do, and get it running. So this is the truck that I built and designed that went to Tamiya and that they used for testing to develop the Tamiya TXT1. After a few months, I got a call from Tamiya and they asked me to come to Japan to check out the truck and to go to the Shizuka Hobby Show that was happening at the same time. And the truck was basically done. It was a production uh, ready uh, piece, but the thing is, is they still had to work on a paint job for it and a name. Uh, so I got to be a part of that. So I met up with the guys at the Tamiya headquarters in Japan, uh, met with a couple of the guys in the conference room and they brought the truck in. And I will be honest with you, I was disappointed with what I saw because it wasn't what they had for a test model um but who cares right we got a high performance platform high performance platform from to me and it was a new truck and it was exciting um you know i was a little concerned because the axles were questionable because that's what was the biggest problem with the original juggernaut and the juggernaut 2 they fixed things but it was still kind of a a thing um, but you know what what are you going to do it's a production truck let's move forward so during the Shizuoka hobby show I actually met with Tamiya a couple times in their booth at the show and they snuck the truck in to the conference room at the booth so that we could discuss the paint job and the name of the truck so we worked on that uh, and one of the things that I regret and I will regret until I die is they wanted to put my actual name on the side of the truck. And the only reason why I said no was because I figured it'd be a conflict of interest with me being at the magazine and having to deal with all these other manufacturers and so on. So that's why it says HB Racing on it, right? I had a nickname with Hinge Boy. Derek Bono from Velocity RC gave me that name and it stuck. Uh, but that was my nickname, Hinge Boy Racing. You know, Hinge Boy, so we did Hinge Boy Racing. So on the truck, on the TXT1, you will see HB Racing. And that is technically my name. So I guess I did make it out of the truck, but not really. But that's my run. one regret in life is not having my actual name on a Tamiya TXT1. 
So the truck sitting here is the Timia TXT1 that Timia gave me for doing the project. Uh, and I had my buddy Rob put it together for me because I just did not have the time to get it together. And it was something that I wanted to get done. So it sat in a box for a long time until I gave it to him. And I was lucky enough to have him build this for me. Uh, and the one thing you will see that's different from the original TXT1 is the body. To me, when they did the TXT1 and when they did something kind of unique and they gave you the ready to run-ish paint job right, with the painted body that comes on the box art and so on, but they also give you a clear body so you could do your own paint job. So this was the clear body that we got for the review, and I was lucky enough to get it after the review. So we took this clear body, and we sent it to my buddy Bill Zeers in Florida to have him do this custom paint job for the article, and this is the body that was used in the review article. Not the truck, but the body. The truck is an all-original Team A TXT1. Here's a look under the body. Now check out that mechanical speed control and resistor. You don't see those anymore. Like my truck, the Tamiya has a cantilever shock setup, but unlike my truck, it has it both front and rear, and the shocks are sitting very high on the chassis. You know, Tamiya has a tendency to do kind of odd things from time to time, and the shock setup is one of them. And another thing about this truck is that Tamiya did their classic too stiff a spring setup, so the suspension hardly moves when you're watching the truck drive around. You'll see it. the shocks aren't really soaking up any bumps. It's almost like a pogo stick, you know, but uh, that's something you could change. It's something you could tweak, so, you know, in the end, it's not so bad. Another odd thing about the suspension on the TXT1 is the sway bar setup. I have no idea why they did this because the one used on my truck was a lot different. They actually set up a sway bar system that attached to the cantilevers on my truck to try it out and make sure that it worked and so on. Well, this is what they came up with for the TXT1. I don't know why you would mount it to the lower links, why you would have a wire tie holding it in place on one end and so on, but that's what they did. And here's the sway bar setup that they used on my truck for testing. To me, this is a much cooler solution uh, and it could have been dialed in to make the truck work, but instead, you know, well, why not mount it to the lower links, right? But this is a much cooler idea. I really like it, and this is gonna stay on my truck when I get it finished and put back together. The Tamiya Juggernaut had an all new tire, and for some reason on the TXT1, Tamiya decided to ditch that and go with a Clodbuster style tire, which surprises me because they spent so much money and time on a mold uh, just to go back to a tire that they had already. And I'm glad I like the Tamiya, the Tamiya Clodbuster tire much better, and we also got these really cool wheels to go with it. Check out this heavy duty bash guard or whatever you want to call it for the front axle. There's also one in the rear. And this is where they mounted the servo for the steering. And again, the nice thing about this, you have the same setup in the rear, same linkages and everything. So it's really easy to set up four wheel steering on this truck. You know, the front bumper is a cool idea to protect the axle housings, but it sticks out really far. It's not tucked in and you know, it can kind of hit things way before the tires do, but that's okay. Again, you know, it's protecting the axles and it's doing its job, but uh, yeah. Pretty beefy stuff. Just like the Tamiya Cloudbuster, the TXT1 has two motors. Two 540 motors come in the box, you bolt them onto a single gearbox, unlike the Cloudbuster that had independent gearboxes, or motor on axle as we call it. Uh, but uh, you know, they have plenty of punch, they, they provide a good speed, and you know, for just the average guy playing with the truck, it's more than enough. The front and rear axles are the units from the Juggernaut 2. They have a lot of gears inside, and a lot of bearings, and a lot of beef. So that's the quick story of the Tamiya TXT1 and how it came to life. And I had an absolute blast working with the guys at Tamiya on the project. I mean, when you grow up with Tamiya stuff and you're a Tamiya fan and you work on Tamiya stuff at the magazine, and then you get to work with Tamiya at Tamiya on the actual stuff, it's pretty unbelievable. So I uh, really enjoyed the truck as is out of the box and I built a couple projects with it, had a lot of fun. And I really enjoy seeing people with their TXT1 still to this day driving them around.